everyone, I'm Sarah and this is Budget Sew, where we create stylish, fashionable looks as inexpensively as possible. One of the things I love to do is go thrift shopping and then show you my thrift haul. Sometimes it's fabric, sometimes it's sewing patterns, and other times it's sewing accessories. But lately I haven't been able to go out thrifting, so today I'm going to show you something from a previous thrift haul. It's a vintage McCall Needlework Annual from 1950. But first, I'm going to show you my most recent make. Today, I'm wearing McCall 6355 and Quick Sew 3195. is McCall 6355. I purchased this pattern from Fabricland and originally made up the dress for a Spice Girl Halloween costume, Ginger Spice. The link to that dress is right here at the top of the screen. The pattern includes a semi-fitted top and dress that have optional front and back vertical darts, self-neck binding, and optional invisible zipper. This is the Palmer Pletch pattern that was published in 2011. These patterns are known for their great fits. The front of the pattern envelope even says, fashion that fits. What it should say is, fashion that fits if you cut out the right size and follow the instructions. Palmer Pledge always recommends pinning the pattern pieces together and then trying it on. I didn't do that. I made the three quarter length sleeve top in view C. I made this top up in a size 16, but it was too big. So I added front and back neck darts to remove the excess fabric around the neckline and eliminate drooping. It also raised the shoulder seam so that it sat on the shoulder rather than on the arm. The next time I make up this pattern, I'll make it in a smaller size and pin the pattern pieces together first, maybe a size 12 or a size 14. Hopefully that will eliminate all the alterations I made. I really should look at the amount of ease listed on the pattern pieces before making this up again too. I didn't make any binding for the neck edge, instead I folded over the edge of the top and finished the neck. I'm very happy with how this top turned out even though I made all those alterations. In future, I'll follow the pattern instructions. The skirt that I'm wearing is Quick Sew 3195 View B. It's a pull-on skirt with an elastic waist. View A and B have various shaped panels with gussets and side seams. On view A, the grain lines are marked for being made from striped fabric. The drawing for view B shows three different fabrics, but I used only one. View C and D are gourd skirts with 16 panels. This pattern was designed for light to medium weight woven fabrics, but I made it up in a knit. I love the drape and the movement of the skirt. I love the length of the skirt and the elastic waist. It's so comfortable. I'll definitely make up this skirt again, but maybe next time I'll try the three different woven fabrics as suggested in the picture. The fabric is a lightweight knit from Fabricland. It was on sale for $4.75 a meter, so I purchased four meters. The fabric is 100% polyester, so it's a great wash and wear fabric. In addition to the top and skirt, I made a dress, Simplicity 2648. The link to that video is right here at the top of the screen. I always try to squeeze out as much as I can out of a piece of fabric. To complete the look, I'm wearing Betsy Johnson designer high heels. I love the hot pink soles and the crystals on the tassels at the heel. I bought the shoes from Mesh Boutique, a consignment boutique just off Richmond Row in London, Ontario. These shoes were originally over $200, but I paid just 20. I bought the ostrich skin London fog purse and bangle bracelet from Valley Village thrift store. The earrings were a gift from a friend. The necklace I purchased at the Salvation Army Charity Shop. Now on to the McCall's Needlework Annual. This is the McCall Needlework Annual from 1950 that I thrifted from Good Value Thrift Stores for $2. While in the store I found an additional two McCall Needlework Annuals from 1951 and 1952 
as well as 22 McCall Needlework magazines from the 1950s through the 1970s. I hope to show you more of these treasures in future videos. So this McCall Annual is the first annual they published. It originally cost $1 in the United States and $1.25 in Canada. This annual has 120 pages of designs with complete instructions for home crafts such as knitting, crochet, embroidery, decorative painting, rug making, needlepoint, and sewing. It has 40 pages of handmade gifts. So let's get started. I like how the annual starts with a letter from the editor, Elizabeth Blondell. She writes, here at long last, collected in one book for handy reference, are full-size designs and craft articles with complete directions, knitting, crocheting, and embroidery. Some of the designs were new, some are favorites taken from the McCall Needlework magazine. We are sure you'll find this McCall Needlework annual a great convenience and inspiration. Probably your neighbors will too, as craft work makes people very neighborly. You'll surely meet other craftsmen who share your interest. You'll be asking and answering such questions as, how long did it take you to make it? And what kind of materials did you use? You will discover that a craft is an exciting challenge to your ability. You'll experience the thrill of submitting your work at fairs and exhibits. You'll even develop an income from selling your products. You will add beauty to your home, be able to present fine gifts to your friends, and above all, you will find real recreation, fun that pays dividends in creative expression and peace of mind. The first page starts with little gifts touched with gold. These enchanting knickknacks are painted in brilliant colors, and there's a touch of gold in each one. At the top of the page, there's a small dish perfect for nuts, cookies, bonbons, and then there's a string holder that used to be a funnel. Next is a flower holder that used to be a watering can, and at the bottom of the page is a large scoop that used to be used in flour or sugar tins, and finally, a salt box for letters, odds and ends, or salt. The next page shows redecorate with paint. Fun for craft workers who like doing things with paint. Refinish and redecorate old tin or tollware. Flat irons or crockery jugs picked up at country auctions. Before I continue with this McCall Needlework Annual, please share this video with your friends and family. I'd love to help others sew and upcycle on a budget and troubleshoot their favorite patterns. I also love sharing the treasure that I find at thrift stores. If you'd like to see more from Budget Sew, Please subscribe and make sure that the bell is on so you receive a notification when I release a new video. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Budget Sew. Now, back to the McCall Needlework Annual. The next page is today's luxurious colors. The top picture is a two-piece suit. Premnen in any woman's wardrobe is a knitted suit with smart lines. I love how the model is posed with one hand on the hip and the other against her cheek, leaning up against the poster of Mexico. The suit is well styled with wear right gloves and Coro jewelry. Below that, we have a plaid coat, an important casual coat which features new length and collar in contrast of gray, red, and black. I love how the coat is accessorized with red gloves, a red scarf, and a bouquet of red roses. Gorgeous. On the next page are knitted blouses. At the top of the page is a scattered cable cardigan. A year-round model knitted in pale green baby yarn with cutaway in front and stand-up collar. She's so elegant with the parasol gloves and matching green purse. At the bottom of the page is the blouse sweater. With surplus front and form-fitting belt line, this sweater has flattering lines. The model looks stunning wearing a black skirt that is accessorized with black gloves and a black purse. The gold earrings and necklace complement this lovely look. On the next page, we have luxurious crochet designed for gracious dining. At the top of the page is a pinwheel tablecloth. The graceful swirls of lacy crochet, a perfect setting for fine china. And below that is a shell placemat, a table setting that's different. Make smaller for glass coasters. At the top of the next page is a fillet luncheon set. It looks so fragile, but is so sturdy and easy to make the better to show off the fine wood of your favorite table. And below that is the peasant luncheon set of red, blue, and yellow crochet. Crochet doilies will flatter tables and shelves. The looped edge doily on the left is a cobweb of fine crochet 
and beside that is the round doily. At the bottom of the page is the shelf doily to dress up your china closet. It's nice how the doily sits on the shelf, but half of it hangs down over the edge of the shelf to showcase your work. On the next page are square by square sets to crochet. The first is the Lucky Clover design for tables and chairs. It's delightful, easy to do, and has the look of real crochet. At the bottom of the page is the medallion chair set, charming and decorative protection for your upholstery. Easy and quick to make, a set you will be proud to own. On the next page, make your rugs color wise. At the top is a McCall's transfer design for a hooked rug, McCall's 1398. The design transfer was 65 cents in America and 75 cents in Canada at the time. Below that is the crochet fan rug made from bright rags. At the bottom of the page is the loop stitch rug, soft and fluffy, directions on page 82. Next is hook with old scraps. First we have a rug with squares, beginner's delight. Hooked in straight lines, the novice can concentrate on even work. Then we have the brick rug, another easy design for a beginner. All straight lines, no shading. Effective in tans, grays, outlined in black. At the bottom of the page is the floral rug, quaint and charming in shaded tones of rose, blue, orchid, and green on black. On the next page is a hobby I'd like to try, wood whittling as a hobby. Mule head bookends whittled from a block of California pine. The directions on page 94 include a diagram showing the actual size of the bookends so that you can trace. Below that are raffia lampshades. They're colorful and easy to make from old shades. Something old, something new. I love this page. So many fun things to make. The first thing is the ice cream parlor chair. Originally, it was finished in the typical dark wood with cane seats, but now the wood is bleached and finished in a soft white, and the seat is covered in a rich emerald green. Beside that is a jewelry chest. It's satin lined, a handsome piece to make your own and the full directions on how to make this are on page 95. And at the bottom of the page is the blonde chest. Before this chest was refinished, it was dark brown and the top was ink stained. Now the chest is bleached blonde and the beautiful grain of the oak is brought out by the whitish tone, which has been rubbed over the entire surface. The pulls made from old picture frames give it a modern effect and its shortened legs complete the modern look. Copper foil tooling made easy. This is another hobby I would love to do. A graceful rose tooled in the living beauty of copper foil. How often have you admired such a picture and wish that you could make it your own? Now you may have the double enjoyment of making it your own. On the next page, there are needlepoint designs to work in rich wools. The first one is a Pennsylvania Dutch fireside scene, a future heirloom that needlepoint lovers will enjoy. The size of the picture is about 11 by 13 and a half inches. The full color chart is on the previous page. Below the fireside scene is a needlepoint eyeglasses case, a charming and useful gift for a special person or to make for yourself. Delightful strawberry motif also adaptable to other small items, such as a small purse or a pincushion. Here we have cut and tack. These attractive designs were made from old felt hats and other odd pieces of felt and dressmaking scraps. At the top of the page, we have a needle case made in the shape of a sunbonnet girl with a lace edged petticoat. Then there is a travel sewing kit that holds thread, tiny needle case, buttons, and snaps. Besides that is a needle book trimmed with dainty felt flowers tied with pink wool. Below that are needle mitten guards miniature mittens to guard your knitting. There's also another needle book, this one of lime green felt with purple violets and ribbon. Beside that is a hat pin cushion, sailor style, trimmed with flowers and a perky, perky bow. And finally, a memo pad case that is so handsome, easily put together. I love this craft, hand blocked Christmas cards. Print the candle in red on sand colored paper, the angel in white on red, Madonna green on white, Christmas green on yellow, Noel black on sand, and the doll white on red. A few Christmases ago, my partner Brad and I learned how to lino print Christmas cards and it was so much fun. 
Lino printing or hand blocking is where you cut a design into linoleum, yes, like floor tile, roll paint over top of it, and press it on the paper. The link to the video where I show you my lino printing is right here at the top of the screen. The next page shows fascinating to weave on huck toweling. At the top of the page, there's a Bargello bag made from a huck towel woven in red and gray cottons. Then below that is the Bargello purse, a flat envelope with a zipper, zipper fastener, towel woven with red and gray cottons, and at the bottom of the page are towel border designs. Stitches are straight and woven, form Greek key and trees. The next page is make a small rug a work of art. At the top of the page, there is the pon-pon rug. Use a pom-pom ring to make oval designs of rose and natural cotton. Below that is a crocheted Bargello rug made in black natural carpet warp. I love the zigzag designs of this. The next page shows hand-painted plastics. Unbreakable Christmas tree ornaments of hand-painted plexiglass are easy to make. Cut them out with a coping saw. Paint with decal and they're beautiful, long-lasting, and different. This page is Enhance It With Edging. A crocheted edging can beautify here and there, where there's a tiny fragile bit on a wispy handkerchief or a substantial wider variety for a scarf or pillowcases. Make your selection from the enticing designs shown, nine in all, ranging from scalloped edges, shells, to Irish roses, appropriate for a multitude of purposes. Don't overlook rainbow or pastel colors. Then there's Eerie Tracery of Tatting. Tatted edgings are at the top on the right. With the shuttle and ball, you will enjoy making these lacy patterns to embellish your fine handkerchiefs or towels. Beside that is a tatted round doily. A misty circlet of tatted transparency, which will be pretty in a number of places, on a round table or tray. And at the bottom of the page is a tatted square doily. Achieve an unusual color effect in the square piece by combining blue, yellow, and ecru. Ideal for a square tray. I've been teaching myself how to tat using a long needle, and I hope that once I have that mastered, that I can teach myself to use a shuttle to tat. Once I've finished my tatted bookmark, I might move on to one of these projects. This makes me laugh. No one ever has too many of these. Hot plate mats. A set of three, large, medium, and small to safeguard the table from piping hot dishes. Crochet in alternating bands of solid and open stitches. Finish in a picot edge. And then there's also pot holders, such useful gifts to make from yarn scraps. Crochet checkerboard, fan, and striped one. Knit others. At the bottom of the page, there's a knitted face cloth. Why not have a cloth that's round for a change and nicely firm? On the next page, there are bathroom accents. At the top of the page, there's a zigzag bathroom set. It's a three-piece set. There's a toilet seat cover, a garbage can cover, and a bath mat. White rows between three shades of blue make a showy pattern. Use rug yarn. I think that this would look so nice in the bathroom. At the bottom of the page is a two-piece bathroom set. Crochet in your favorite color. Next is make a small rug. Rug in crochet squares of rug yarn, beige with green and rust flowers and stripes. Then there's the textured, textured checks rug. Crochet in firm puff stitches with light and dark blues. So pretty. The next page shows three sets to crochet. These are all chair sets that include arm and headrest covers. At the top of the page is the ring motif chair set. Made of small circles, it joins point to point. Below that is the square motif chair set with round centers, the squares form the classic design. Then there's the pineapple chair set. Repeat pattern row after row in cascades. Afghans to treasure. The first afghan is a shell and rose afghan, decorated with cross stitch. Wide stripes or rust, narrow or brown, embroidery in blue, green, and brown. It's so nice that they describe the design even though the photo is in black and white. Below that is the slipper stitch afghan, Zigzag pattern in three shades of green is effective made in three strips. Next we have lacy crochet designs. At the top of the page there is a round cobweb doily. Designed for a hundred uses. Highlight a small table of use to set off your favorite base. At the bottom of the page is the bud and leaf bedspread. 
Race Design crocheted after doing square. This is such a lovely textured design. On the next page, Roses for Beauty. At the top of the page is the Oval Doily, a pretty design to make for gifts for any occasion. Pico points in floral center and pico edging. And at the bottom of the page is the Irish Rose bedspread. In each square nestles a crocheted Irish rose. Popcorn stitch dots the corners. On the next two pages, it says put a rug in its place in the home. There's a tile rug in light and dark cotton crocheted in squares. Nice for any room. Then there's a six sided rug crocheted from old sweaters, plain and striped. Next is the kitten and bunny rug. Decorated with playful pets, it will brighten any nursery. And at the top of the next page is the puff stitch nursery rug. Crocheted in puff stitch, light and dark blue and ivory. Rug is washable. And then there's my favorite, the poodle rug. Fluffy idea for a boudoir, made by sewing loops of cotton yarn on a muslin back. And then there's a chair and rug set. Crocheting this set is simplified by using the easy does it frame. Exquisite mats for table settings. We start with the Primrose Luncheon Set. Each square of the mat and runner has a circlet of flowers in the center. Below that is the mesh border place mat. The centers are solid, bordered with deep edge of mesh lace. With china or pottery, at the top of the page is the floral luncheon set. This openwork pattern is beautifully suited for a floral setting with your best tableware. Then there's the straw luncheon set. Mats of straw-like yarn are just right for the new pottery sets. This material achieves a cool effect, lovely in green and white. Heirloom patterns for bedspreads. First, there's a popcorn crochet bedspread. Each square has a center popcorn motif. And below that is the knitted shell bedspread. Knit the shells separately of cotton yarn and then join. I like the shape of the shells, very nice. On the next page, it says to knit or crochet. Knitted bedspread with star motif. Knitted on sock needles. Join border and squares. Then there's the fringed bedspread. Even distribution of solid and open work has a nice texture. For gala occasions, at the top of the page is the Clooney design tablecloth. The flowered circle medallions are joined together with small open star motifs in this delicate cloth. And at the bottom of the page is a sunflower tablecloth, a sumptuous cloth crocheted with large sunflower designs, ending smaller joining motifs. These tablecloths remind me of one of my mother's that we used to use for special occasions like Thanksgiving or Christmas. We put a solid colored tablecloth underneath the crocheted one and it looked so nice. Then there's lacy tablecloths lend party air. At the top of the page, there's a giant fillet tablecloth. Big meshes, two to an inch, and large squares make this openwork pattern a quick one to finish. Then there's the cartwheel doily. Plan your round doily to fit your purpose. It's easily adjusted to 11, 18, or 21 inch size with a shell edge. And at the bottom of the page, there's the crochet cutwork set. Crochet florals are used as cutwork on linen for oval mats and rounded doilies. Crochet edge. On the next page, there's these sets are good looking and easy to crochet. At the top, there's the wheel motif chair set. The popcorn center emphasizes these wheel motifs. Crochet pico edge joined together for set. Then there's the medallion chair set. Each medallion measures just an inch across. Pattern works up quickly into neat orderly rows. And at the bottom, there's the fillet chair set, a simple solid open work stitch which is easy to do and makes a sturdy, good looking set. On the next page, there's delightful in effect. First, there's the pineapple doily. Lovely in design, one to enjoy making, about 15 and a half inches in diameter. Then there's a shell doily. Each motif has a wheel-like center and six spokes of shells. At the bottom, there's the pico edge doily. Picos dot the center and add interest to the open mesh. Now more ladies fashions inspired to keep you nice and warm. The circular bed jacket is at the top of the page. A cape light jacket knitted in pastel shades of soft wool to slip over the head. Lace pattern. I love how this photo is styled with the model's arms resting on a magazine rack full of McCall's magazines. Below that is a crocheted sleeve scarf. 
Ward off the winter chill with this welcome scarf crocheted in sports yarn over arms and shoulders, made in two halves seamed at back, drawstring cuffs. This looks like a lovely project to crochet. Maybe this will be my first attempt at crocheting. On the next page are matching sets in the fashion scene. These are gorgeous hat and bag sets. The first one is a chenille hat and bag. New in style, this pearl gray set is crocheted in chenille mounted on a silver frame. And below that is the mailman's pouch and matching bonnet. bonnet. A beautiful shoulder bag crocheted in blue cord on a red leather bottom. This matching bonnet is close fitting with small brim. Next, we have even more ladies fashions with up to the minute hand knits. Flying high, knit a tucked, ruffled, or striped vestie for this navy dress. I like that each of the three vesties has a matching cuff for the sleeves. This is a great way to change the look of an outfit without changing the whole outfit. This would be great for traveling. Beside that is the dolman pullover. Luscious rose colored dolman sleeves for travel or stay at home. This outfit is styled so nice with the pearl bracelets and necklace. I love the curved waistband of the pants. So stylish. On the next page, we have ribbon and wool for evening glamour. First, there's the pink evening blouse. Knit a scoop neck blouse of dusty pink boucle yarn. I love the ruffled sleeves and the textured neckline. I love how it's styled with the belt and the fingerless lace gloves. Beside that, there's the ribbon blouse and bag. Strictly gorgeous, a ribbon knit blouse with a little pouch bag to match. Then there's his from St. Nick. The first gift is men's knitted gloves. Any man will like this gift. Use a crew cotton or his favorite color. The second gift is men's white tennis socks, trimmed with red and navy bands. Then there's the golf club head sock. Your golfing friends will like these to protect their clubs when not in use. And finally, there's cross cable socks. A handsome and sturdy design to be knitted in Heather Mix. On the next page, there's hers, sure to please. The first item is women's gift mittens, knitted in black worsted, embroidered in red and green. Then there's a crocheted bag, bright red straw-like yarn crocheted on a basket bottom. Then there's a crocheted collar, cuffs, and pocket set. Narrow blue silk ribbon make this set. I just love it. You can change the look of your outfit by just adding these pieces, very smart. Then we move on to the portfolio of gifts to sew or embroider. The nicest gift is the one you make yourself. And it says, now you open the gift section. These are the most popular McCall's patterns for gifts. You can make them in a variety of fabrics and colors. Your materials give your gift the individual touch. These McCall patterns for gifts are on sale at your local McCall's dealer. I'm gonna start with feminine frills. These are all Mrs. Blouses. First, there is McCall's 1458. It's a sheer printed blouse with blue transfer for embroidery. I love the embroidery detail down the front of the blouse and the lace collar and cuffs. It's so pretty. Then there's the blouse McCall's 1405. It has a high round collar with front ruffles and lace. It also comes with a blue transfer for embroidery. On the other side of the page, there's McCall's 1521. It's a pattern for collars and cuffs with blue transfer for embroidery. Nine different designs in one pattern. And finally, there's a camisole pattern, McCall's 1423, with blue transfer for embroidery, made in waist length or tuck-in styles. I like the ribbon detail on the white version and the embroidery on the pink version. Then we move on to drama and decorative accessories. We'll start with McCall's 1552. It's a collar and cuffs pattern. I just love these. One size, three different styles. Shown are the rounded collar with button closing and notched capelet collar. They've paired these collars with McCall's 1434, a stuffed cat, and McCall's 1299, a stuffed zebra, about 11 inches high. Then there's McCall's 1566 for women's and girls lounge slippers. This pattern comes with an electric blue transfer and includes all sizes, small, medium, and large. I love the tassel details on these. And below that, there's McCall's 1075 for soft slippers, three styles for ready-made soles, and it includes a travel case. The embroidery on the slippers and case are from McCall's 1447. It's a transfer design for script alphabets, and it's in three sizes. 
two and a half inch, one and a half inch, and one inch high. Sequin letters are effective on slippers and case. On the next page, there's hat, bag, neckwear accents. At the top of the page is McCall's 1463. It's a beret pattern with an electric blue transfer for embroidery. Head sizes 22 and 23. Three styles with varied, varied fabrics and trims. Beside that pattern is McCall's 1500 for ladies and misses scarves, one size. For taffeta, gross green ribbon, print and plain materials in eight different styles. Below that is McCall's 1538, ladies and misses hats and bag. Head sizes 22 and 23, but adjustable. Cloche styles in three versions. The bag is about eight inches deep. Then there's McCall's 1498, ladies and misses hats. Head sizes 22 and 23. These styles include a bonnet with a roll back brim, beret and six petal cap. Recommended fabrics are velvet, satin and tweeds. And finally, there's McCall's 1531. Ladies and Mrs. Hats and Bag with electric blue transfer for embroidery. Head size is 22 and 23. This pattern includes a one piece envelope bag. The custom look is on the next page. The first pattern is McCall's 1508. Ladies and Mrs. Bags. View A is a melon shape and is eight inches deep. View B is a square bag and is 12 or 16 inches and view C is a shoulder bag and is seven and a half inches. I love how these three bags are very different but are all in one pattern envelope. Next is McCall's 1471, a girl's hat and bag pattern. The next pattern is McCall's 1470 and it's a ladies and misses beret and three bags with blue transfer for applique. The bag is 11 inches and the beret is one piece for head size 22. The last pattern on this page is McCall's 1294, sorry. It's a ladies and misses hats and bag. Head size is 22 and 23. Bag is seven and a half by nine inches with hand or shoulder strap. It is machine stitched with a matching hat. I think this pattern looks quite smart. The next page is a dash of color. These patterns are a lot of fun. The first pattern is McCall's 1541 and it's a Mrs. Felt Circle Skirt and Hat. The skirt is one size and is adjustable 24 to 28 inches. Applicate flowers in contrasting felt. The skirt reminds me of another skirt that I saw in the McCall's Felt magazine that I showed you in a prior video. The link to that video is at the top of the screen. I have plans to make that skirt somewhat similar, so stay tuned to Budget Sew for that future video. Now with this skirt, I love how the colors uh, come together. The yellow background with the red and black appliques, very sharp. Beside that is McCall's 1297, a Mrs. Western shirt. It comes with a blue or yellow transfer for embroidery. There is a lot of embroidery on this top, on the cuffs, on the sleeves, and the upper front of the blouse. Below that is McCall's 1530. I would love to have this pattern. It's a Mrs. Smock with yellow or blue transfer for embroidery. Trim with embroidered dragons. Not only do I like the collar and the length and the cut of the smock, but I love the embroidered dragons on the pockets and the collar. Just gorgeous. And at the bottom of the page is McCall's 1457. This is a Mrs. Blouse with electric blue transfer for embroidery. The work collar and cuffs in satin stitch. I like how the flowers that are embroidered in red match the red buttons down the front of the blouse. The next page features Go Anywhere coats. First, there's McCall's pattern 1565. It's a Mrs. and Junior casual coat in travel designs with yellow or blue transfer for embroidery and applique. The front of the jacket has a ship on one side and a plane on the other and compasses on the sleeve. The back has a globe surrounded by the Eiffel Tower, windmills and other fun Im images. Next is McCall's 1524. It's a Mrs. Coat for beach or evening with a yellow or blue transfer. It's interesting how this jacket is casual for the beach, but then if you make it out of satin, it becomes evening wear. It's just lovely. And beside that pattern is McCall's 1399. It says that it's a Mrs. Coat or Junior's themed jacket with a blue or yellow transfer. It comes in a size small, which is 10 to 12, or size large, which is 14 to 16 and embroider on felt or flannel. 
Then there's aprons for service and good looks. At the top of the page is McCall's 1469. It's a Mrs. Apron pattern with yellow or blue transfer for embroidery. One size suitable for size 12 to 18. It requires three yards of 35 inch material. I just love the large pocket on the side and the embroidery design. Then there's McCall's 1452. It's a ladies and Mrs. coverall apron with blue transfer for embroidery and applique. It comes in sizes small, which is 14 to 16, medium, which is size 18 to 20, and large, which is size 40 to 42. I like the waistband tie and the rickrack trim on this apron. And at the bottom of the page is McCall's 1407. It's a Mrs. Apron pattern, one size, requiring one and three eighths of a yard of 35 inch fabric and three quarters of a yard of 35 inch contrast. The bows on this are very feminine. Then we have practical and dainty. The first pattern is McCall's 1451. It's a ladies and misses coverall apron with electric blue transfer for applique and embroidery. I really like the coverall aprons, very handy. Beside that, there's McCall's 1377. It's a ladies and misses orange blossom apron and pot holder pattern. There's a blue transfer for the applique included. And the illustration is in organdy. At the bottom of the page is McCall's 1532. It's a Mrs. Apron with blue transfer for embroidery. Sizes small, 12 to 14, and large, 16 to 18. Two versions at left and right. So one version is illustrated and the other version is photographed with McCall's 1533, a girl's apron pattern. So now mother and daughter can have matching aprons. Very cute. On the next page are perky little aprons. McCall's 1279 is a Mrs. Apron pattern with blue transfer for embroidery, one size. With bib requires one and a quarter yards of 35 inch fabric and five and a half yards of rickrack trim. I like the white and on blue polka dot fabric with the blue bows and red flowers and red rickrack. Beside that is McCall's 1336. It's a ladies and Mrs. Apron with blue or yellow transfer for embroidery only one size and requires one yard of 35 inch material. Below that is McCall's 1124. It's a Mrs. Apron pattern with blue or yellow transfer for embroidery. Sizes are small, 10 to 12, medium, 14 to 16, and large, 18 to 20. This apron comes with an optional bib. Next, there's McCall's 1367. It's a ladies or Mrs. applique apron with blue transfer for applique and embroidery only one size, one yard of 35 inch fabric, one and a half yards of contrast. I like the heart shapes of this pattern. They're very pretty. On the next page is for pretty party serving. The first pattern is McCall's 1509. It's a Mrs. Tunic apron. One size requires two and a quarter yards of 34 inch lace and two yards of one inch ribbon. I like this pattern because not only can it be used as an apron, but the apron can be turned back to front for an overskirt effect, or it can be worn as a capelet. Very elegant. Next, there's McCall's 1312. It's a Mrs. Apron. Only one size, requires three quarters of a yard of 35 inch or 42 inch material, one quarter yard of contrasting color, round or point edges. I like that the point edges of the hem of this apron are mimicked on the waistband. Then there's McCall's 1550. It's a Mrs. Apron pattern to be made from scraps of fabric. One size and five ways to combine scraps of various sizes for an ensemble effect. On the next page, there's lookalikes for cooking teams. These are so cute. The first pattern is McCall's 1481. It's a Mr. and Mrs. Aprons with blue transfer for embroidery, one size. Man's apron with bib and tape trim, women's apron with rickrack trim. If I had this pattern, I'd be tempted to make the man's apron because it has the bib. Less chance of me getting messy. Below that is another couple's apron. McCall's 1515 includes aprons, chef's hat, and mitts with blue transfer for the applique. You quilt the pair of mitts. Bib aprons in one size and tape trimmed. <laughs> the version the woman is wearing makes me giggle. Hot dogs! <laughs> Next, it's apple picking time. This is McCall's 1562. It's a transfer design picture for needlework. It's 13 and a half by 16 and a quarter inches. Use six strand cotton. 
satin single or lazy daisy stitch in French knots. This fall scene reminds me of the countryside near my home. On the next page are wildlife and rural scenes. The first is McCall's 1291, a transfer design for the pheasants. A picture or a wall hanging in cross stitch. The size is 16 by 19 and 3 quarter inches and is for stranded cotton. Seven crosses to the inch. Then there's McCall's 1520. This is a transfer design for rural America. A sampler picture in cross stitch. The size is seven and a quarter inches by 18 and a quarter inches for six strand cotton and seven crosses to the inch. And finally, there's McCall's 1359. It's a transfer design for the mallards. It's a picture or wall hanging in cross stitch. The size is 16 by 19 and three quarter inches and it has a chart for the colors. Seven stitches, seven cross stitches to the inch. Next, there's the woodland picture, McCall's 1429. It's a transfer design of a mother deer and fawn for cross stitch. Planned for 31 colors, use six strand cotton. The design is 19 and a quarter by 23 and three quarter inches and the crosses are seven to an inch. On the next page are still life pictures, three different designs. McCall's 1486 is a transfer design for fruit arrangements. This cross, this cross stitch picture is 11 by 12 and three quarter inches with seven crosses to the inch. Use six stranded cottons. Then there's McCall's 1112. It's a transfer design for cross stitch picture. It's a lovely rose bouquet. The design is 13 by 3 eighths by 18 and 5 eighths of an inch for stranded cottons and seven crosses to the inch. And at the bottom of the page is McCall's 1460, a transfer design for geraniums for cross stitch. The size is 15 and 5 eighths by 19 and a half inches with directions for framing. On the next page is a cross stitch print. McCall's 1397 is a transfer design for cross stitch and it's a picture of a beautiful bouquet of tulips and lilacs. This design is 13 and three quarters by 18 and three quarter inches for stranded cottons and seven crosses to the inch. This design matches McCall's 1112, the rose bouquet. Then there's We Love Color and Linens. The first transfer design is McCall's 1512. It's a transfer design for cross stitch pillowcases or sheets. Two different designs, each trims one pair of pillowcases or one case and one sheet for a single bed. Next, there's McCall's 1428, a transfer design for Pennsylvania Dutch motifs and cross stitch. Four tablecloth motifs, bedspread motif, and four each of four other motifs. Then there's McCall's 1518, a transfer design for cutwork tablecloths and napkins. I just love the look of cutwork. Pattern includes two center, eight napkins, four corner motifs, and seven and a half yards banding. Next, there's McCall's 1567, a transfer design for embroidered pillowcases. Two each of two designs, six and three quarters by seven and a half inches wide, finished with lace or crochet. On the next page, there's embroidery adds a luxury touch. First, there's McCall's 1510. This is a transfer design for guest towels. One each of six designs from four and a half by 13 inches to six and an eighth by 13 inches. Companion motifs, lazy daisy, outline, and satin stitches. Then there's McCall's 1513, a transfer design for rose cross stitch tablecloth and six napkins. Designs are 54 by 72 inches or 54 by 54 inch cloth, oblong or square design. Below that, there's McCall's 1396. It's a transfer design for undersea motifs. Motifs in two sizes, eight large and eight small. Crabs, turtles, lobsters, and fishes. 12 napkin starfishes. And finally, there's McCall's 1511. It's a transfer design for cutwork pillowcases or towels. One pair each of three designs. Three and an eighth by 22 inches. For colored applique with cutwork. I hope you enjoyed my 1950 McCall Needlework Annual. Please like and share this video with your friends and family. And if you'd like to see more from Budget Sew, please subscribe. And if you'd like to stay up to date with Budget Sew, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Budget Sew. Thanks for watching. See you next time.